And what don't you like about living here? I really can't think of anything. I'm going to be sharing the second installment in my story of my road trip around the United States in my van. And this story is about Slab City, which is, if you haven't heard of it, it's sometimes referred to as the lawless city of America or the last free place in America. The state will only come out here if it's a report of a vehicle park. It's the only reason they'll ever come out here. And basically the history of this place is it used to be an army base, but when the army left, they left some slabs of cement and people started moving in there, either building houses or built, bringing RVs and they didn't want any laws out there. They just wanted to be free out in the middle of the desert. Sick and tired of society. Yeah. So you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't build like this. Freedom. 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 So the Constitution is about freedom. There's about 500 people there in the summer that are full-timers, and then up to 5,000 people in the winter that just come because it's a lot colder in the winter and it's super, super hot in the summer. But I'm just gonna start with the story of how I got there and everything that happened to me because I got stranded there. It was, it's, it was a crazy story. So basically I'm going through some sand dunes and heading into Southern California after the rest of my kind of Route 66 adventure, which I made a whole separate video about. And I get there in the middle of the night, kind of, it's like 11 p.m. So I don't know where to sleep for the night, but I, I have my van with a bed in it and everything like that. So I basically just pull over on the side of the road, figure I'll meet some people and find a better spot to camp in the morning. What's up guys? We're in Slab City, Nyland, California. It is very, very hot out. And in the morning, I kind of continue my trajectory around the edge of the town and figure I'll take a right and head back into the center of the town. But as I'm going through this area of kind of just trash on every side, it's kind of gross, I see that the path is getting worse and worse and eventually I'm just on sand. And so I see this, lump ahead of me so I try to go fast to get to the top of that so I can reverse back down that uh, but it doesn't work I get stuck at the top of this little hill and I had gotten stuck in the sand already on this trip which might mean that I'm just don't know when to not drive in sand but this one was a lot worse because I was like literally in the middle of nowhere I don't know anyone there and uh, later in the week, I try calling AAA, but they literally just say, no, you're too far out in the sand. So I don't know what to do, um, but I basically just start asking around, looking for people that have trucks and asking if they want to pull me out of the sand. And eventually I get referred to this guy named Cadillac Man and his wife, Jenna. Uh, my name is actually David, but I didn't like to the Cadillac Man. I'm Jenna. Cadillac man is named Cadillac man because he has a couple Cadillacs, but he also has this flatbed truck called Fat Bastard. So when I get there, he's like, okay, no, just give me 20 bucks. Uh, that Apparently that's the going rate in Slab City for getting towed out of the sand. He's like, uh, give me 20 bucks. I'll tow you out of the sand. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And so we go out. It's probably 105 degrees that day in the blazing hot sun. And this super nice dude it spends basically the entire day trying to pull me out of the sand and he makes about 20 feet um but i'm still pretty stuck in the sand at the end of the day and so he offers to for me to sleep in his guest trailer essentially he's got like a few different trailers there but i sleep in the guest trailer if i was anywhere else I don't know if I would have got somebody to come out there and dig out my car for two days, you yeah. know? I Yeah, I really appreciate it. Or, say you know, we're done for the night, it's getting too damn late, too damn hot, too damn night, really, just go to pub, cool down, get a good night's sleep, clean up, rest up, 
and go back at it again. He says in the morning, his friend Wolf is going to be able to bring us some grates that are going to help us use another strategy to get me out of the sand. I was going to have coffee, grease up that bastard. He's going to grab Wolf, and the grates, and he's going to go out and do it, get it done early in the morning. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. We get delayed because there's this dude named Shaggy who uh, gets his foot like broken in a four wheeler. And so Cadillac Man is one of the only people that has like a working car, I guess, to go to the hospital. So he has to bring Shaggy to the hospital that morning. And then finally, you know, somewhere midday, Wolf gets there and this guy Wolf has these metal grates and a jack. So they're gonna use those uh, alongside the tow truck to try to get me out of this sand. And we work there on the car for a while and it's going pretty well, but then Cadillac Man gets a call from Jenna that there is someone messing with their campsite. And basically their next door neighbor is pretty insane and has in the past taken their pets, probably drugged them up and left them in the middle of the desert. And I think it's some kind of weird thought process that animals shouldn't be captive. It doesn't make sense to me, obviously, but obviously their neighbor is crazy and has sent a mentally challenged person to kind of mess with Cadillac Man and Jenna's camp. So Cadillac Man has to leave to go, you know, kick him out of their property, essentially. And so I'm stuck there with Wolf. Um, and finally, Wolf gets me out with these grates. We get back there. Cadillac Man has dealt with the, the issue at the camp. There are so many just random crazy things going on in this place at a time. But essentially, now I'm out of this getting stuck in the sand. And now Wolf offers that if I drive him back to his house, uh, he will give me a nice cold bath in his bath house. And so I'm like, sick, I, isn't this the best? And so I get to check out Wolf's uh, whole camp, which is called Camp Wolf Pack, rightfully so. And it's not technically a part of Slab City, it's actually, separate from Slab City, it's right next to it. Um, and to explain why he owns that land, I basically need to explain this man's entire life story. <sighs> when he was around 10 years old, his dad would just leave him in the swamp and say, you have to get home by this time or you don't get fed. And so, but at some point he stopped trying to find his way home and just started making scavenging for food in the woods. With his second wife, he had a successful landscaping business and had multiple cars uh, or like trucks for it and everything and had a pretty, uh, a multi-million dollar house that he'd been passed down from his family and it was in a expensive area so it was worth a lot of money and at some point he ended up getting in some trouble. I don't know exactly what the trouble was first for. He blew up the parole office. He got a few blocks away from the parole office and even though he was that far, he was still knocked to the floor from the explosion. Um, and so he went back to prison with a life sentence, but after 32 years, he was let out for a technicality. He explained what this technicality was, but I, I don't understand law, so I couldn't explain it. But anyways, he had been protecting someone in prison who was the son of someone with a lot of money who actually owned this property right next to Slab City and gave him this property and uh, allows him to build on it or allow other people to build their properties as long as they're reasonable people and okay. uh, and all of that. Uh, if you want, you can stay in the yurt. Okay. Because you know, it's, it's for yeah. travelers. There's a comfortable couch in there. Uh, if you need sheets and blankets, let me know and I'll grab them. I 
like I said, this is a camp that's open for anybody who plays his name. You know, obviously, after 32 years in prison, he's kind of a changed man or whatever from whatever crime he'd done in the past because he's basically the kindest guy I've ever met. It kind of allows a better opportunity, I think, than Slab City itself because like I said, you know, Cadillac Man and Jenna had that neighbor that was doing crazy stuff. And there's there's a lot of drugs in Slab City. There's a lot of other, you know, problems. Down at Salvation Mountain, from what I heard, took two rounds. Somebody over a skate park got decapitated. We had a body that was found in a shallow grave. We had a drowning up in the upper canal. Uh, somebody drowned in the... Uh, died over by the hot spring but in this area it's a little bit more secluded and he doesn't really get messed with too much so it took me two days to get my car out of slab city but i ended up staying another two days i stayed a night at wolf's and another night at Cadillac Man and Jenna's. And basically what I wanna share from this story is just how kind these people from Slab City are. They asked me for $20 to spend two full days essentially pulling me out of the sand. Uh, and you know, Cadillac Man gave me like a ratchet strap that was brand new and just all these things. These people don't have a ton but they make do with what they have and they're still like the most generous people that I have come across in my entire life. Especially the further into summer we're getting, there's more and more people that'll take on people that they don't even fucking like just to save their life, just to help somebody else too. You know, people that have so much more that I've come across would never give the amount that these people are willing to give, whether it's things or whether it's their time, whatever it is. These people are just just super giving people. There's a guy we got back over here. He fucked us hard last year. We came down to the internet cafe. That was supposed to be us. Oh, really? Yeah, it was supposed to be us. And we carried his ass all summer. Ice, water, Gatorade, soda, food. We did a lot of feeding. In fact, we still, people come up saying they're hungry and we, we still got a bunch of food if we bag it up and we pass it right on. I think people might have a misconception a little bit about, you know, it's this random pop-up city in the middle of the desert. So yeah, there are drugs there, there's crime there but it's not really any more than anywhere else in the world. And I think they make up for that with the people that I came across who were just the kindest people that I've ever met. The same amount of problems here that there is out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still got your, your crackheads, your meth heads, your heroin addicts. You still got the psychological challenge people. You got people who are so stupid on the shit they want to cause problems <coughs> for everybody. That's everything. You're not going to get away from that. The only thing we've actually had stolen from us out here in the, in the slabs is a burn barrel. I oh. paid $10 for it. I don't give a shit. Now, however, down in Nyland, which is the town right next to us, I've had $200 ladder stole from me and a $150 uh, magnet sweeper stole from me. And not that long ago, I actually had a gun pulled on me at the gas station. I'm not worried about my safety. I'm worried about my wife who's in that store. Jojo, he's an old man. I'm worried about the other customers in that place. Heck, the gas station don't mean shit to me, but the people, that's a different store. <sighs> but yeah, that's the story of Slab City. This This video is a little bit more off the cuff than the last video because I just wanted it to come from the heart and just just share the story myself. Well, there's always a saying out here, if you don't like your neighbor, just move. Yep. That's one of the good things about living, yeah, living out here is if you can't stand the person you live by, you can just up and Cool. Mm -hmm. That's true. I like that. Plus the freedom comes with a price out here. Mm -hmm. Still got to work for your water. Still got to try to build shelter to stay out of the heat. As far as being lawless, yeah. Same damn laws out there actually do apply here. The thing is, is here, nobody gives a fuck. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are there are rules here. They're common sense rules. Although you get some idiots out here, they think of a cock of a walk and just nothing applies to them. They can act however the fuck they want to act. Okay. There are consequences. Yeah, there are consequences. And if they're that damn stupid that they can't figure those consequences out, it's like maybe I shouldn't do that. They're fucking leaving to their own demise. A lot of these guys will get on YouTube and they'll do their own little channels and they'll seek out donations and shit like that. Of course, a lot of them, they get that. Yeah. Me? Donate if you want to. I ain't gonna ram it down your throat. I'm not gonna boast it all over the fucking internet. Fuck that shit. Mm -hmm. No. If you no. feel like it, go for it. And what don't you like about living here? I really can't think of anything. Nope. Mm -hmm. If somebody offered me a house back out there, offered me a life right at the paper, single fucking thing, just live out there, and that's it. Fuck that. Fuck that. Take it.